Hey everyone, it's Pat from Bad Dad Music, and today we're checking out how to play E minor 7. But I'm going to show you the beginning method, the intermediate, and the advanced method. Now what's great about the beginning method is you only actually need one finger. So definitely stick around for that chord, and we're going to go through the theory as well about why it is a minor 7th and how it gets the name and the sound. If you're not sure about any of the theory, because we do sort of touch on it lightly, head to patdavidmusic.com for heaps and heaps of free videos, guys. Don't need to subscribe to anything, just head to the website, you're all good from there. But otherwise, guys, let's get started. So E minor 7th, right? So think of it as three different things. So E means it's a type of E chord. Minor means it's a sad sounding chord with a flattened third degree, very important. And seventh means you have that seventh degree as well. Now when you put E minor together, that means you're playing a sad sounding E chord. When you put minor seventh together, it means you're using a sad sounding chord with a seventh degree that's flattened. And when you put it together, you've got E minor seventh, which sounds like this. Now E minor, the notes are E, G, and B, but you've got a seventh there. So how do you get the seventh? It's really, really easy. So if you were to play on the fifth string, the seventh fret, you would get an E note. Now if you move back two frets, that's your flattened seventh. So if you move back only one fret, then you're on D sharp, and that's a major seventh. But the chord is minor seventh, so you want to move back a semitone, so you're on D. So in E minor seventh, just think of it, as a sad sounding E minor chord, but with a D added as well, and that's what gives it that seventh chord. But otherwise, guys, no more rambling. Let's check it out. Definitely stay towards the end because with one chord, I will show you how to play all of the minor seventh chords that there are. Let's dive in, guys, okay? So what you want to do is you just want to have one finger. It's so easy. Just have your first finger on the second fret of the fifth string and play all the other strings open. Does it seem crazy? I know it seems crazy, but I'll explain why it works. That's E minor 7th. Because remember the notes are E, G, B, and D. So let's go through the notes if we're holding that 2nd fret. So that the first string is E. The next string you've got a B note. Next you've got the all-important 7th degree, which is the D. Next you've got the 3rd string, which is a G. Then you've got a B string. And you've got an E string. That's it, right? Now, if you do want a slightly different sound, you can sort of mix up things, but that's definitely the easiest way to play E minor seventh. Good job. Now, if you don't like that voicing or you want to make it a little bit harder for yourself, let's check out the intermediate version, and this is more of a bar chord. The next version, guys, the intermediate version. Again, it's a movable shape, so you can move it all around. If you just move it up a fret, you'll get another minor seventh chord. So one shape to rule them all, guys. So what you want is you want your first finger on the second fret of the fourth string. That's your E note. Then you want your pinky, and it does get a little bit tricky here, you want your pinky on the 4th fret of the 3rd string, that's your B. That's your 5th degree, right? Then you want your 3rd finger, tricky, on the 3rd fret of the 2nd string, that's your 7th degree, that's the D. And finally, you want your 3rd finger all the way down there on the 3rd fret of the 1st string. And that's it, so again the notes in the chord, E, G, B, D, and that's all there move it up a fret, then you've got F minor 7th. Move it up two frets, you've got G minor 7th. And again, it's just a closed voicing, but it's just a different way of playing that chord. You might prefer the first version. Otherwise, guys, you've got all of the minor 7th chords. Great job. Let's learn another more advanced method. So with this one, you want to come in and you want to be barring or holding down a lot of the strings with your first finger. So it might be a little bit tricky, just take your time, stick with the other two methods, and once your fingers are strong enough, come back. So you come in all the way on the seventh fret of the fifth string, because that's your E note. Then you want to bar and hold down all of the strings with that first finger. You want to use your third finger on the ninth fret of the fourth string there, that's your power chord. The next string, the third string, you want still held with your first finger. That's a seventh degree there. Then you want your second finger, second finger on the 8th fret of the 2nd string and you want your first finger again holding down that 7th fret and that's it and that's probably my favourite lovely voicing of this chord and the best thing is again it's E minor 7 because we're starting on the 7th fret move the chord down, move the whole shape down 2 frets right and then you've got D minor 7 move it back another 2 frets you've got C minor 7 Back a fret, B minor 7. 
So again, one chord shape and he played all of the minor seventh chords. Great job guys. Now again, if this theory was a little bit confusing, if you weren't sure that in a minor chord you have a flattened third, if you weren't sure that in a minor seventh chord you have a flattened seventh. If none of that made sense guys, head over to Pat Devon Music. But as always, thank you very much for checking out this video guys. If you did like it, definitely click like. If you know some other voicings that you like, definitely let me know. If it was too hard or too easy, leave comments as well guys. See you all again. Bye.